The disturbing effects of salvia and other legal highs can be found easily on YouTube and other video sharing websites. Due to this rise in popularity and profile of legal highs and the controversy around drugs such as salvia and peprazine, I thought I'd try and find out how easy they are to get hold of and also what controls are in place to regulate their use. Salvia and other herbal drugs are incredibly popular and the legal high industry is worth millions worldwide. Britain is seen as a hub for these drugs, not only in head shops but also online. So I've just taken a walk up Camden High Street here in North London and uh, I've come back with a whole range of legal highs. They include everything from the organic extracts of salvia which we've seen having effects on people earlier and this one which is a, uh, this is piperazine in a, in a capsule with some caffeine and it's labelled Super E. So there's a whole range of things. Now we've seen what this stuff can do to you. So how are shopkeepers able to sell you this stuff legally? Well. Speaking to them, it's interesting the number of legal loopholes they jump through. For example, the salvia here is uh, quite clearly has a description on the back of who uses this stuff and how there's a spiritual law about Mexican Indians. But at the right at the bottom, it actually just says not for human consumption. So it's a, it's a toy, effectively. And it's the same with the petrazine. This actually... It says on the back here, novelty plant food only, not for human consumption. So essentially, once you take it out of the shops, it's up to you what you do with it. You can put it on your plants, you can just have it as a bit of novelty plant extract, or you can take it as a drug. Having bought all that so easily, I wanted to find out more about how we classify drugs in Britain. I went to see Colin Blakemore, who's been looking into drugs and their impacts on individuals and society. How are drugs classified at the moment? Well, in this country, they're classified by the well-known A, B and C system introduced in the Misuse of Drugs Act in 1961. The problem is that the A, B, C system is being used politically, being used to send messages. Um, and that, uh, to some extent, I think is responsible for the reluctance to change the classification of drugs, particularly to downgrade drugs, because of the concern that this seems to send a message to young people that it's, um, it's, it's OK to use a drug because it's gone from, let's say, B to C. So we wanted to devise a system which was flexible, which could be reviewed regularly and which didn't have these sharp divisions. So we thought about all the ways in which drugs can harm people and harm society and came up with nine different categories of harm. Three of them harm to the individual, three to do with addiction, and three concerned with effects on society. We asked groups of experts to look at a large number of different drugs, including legal drugs, and for each of those nine categories to give a number between zero and five. And we then just added together all of those individual scores to come up with one combined overall estimate of harm. That then allowed us to rank the drugs from heroin and cocaine at the very top down to ecstasy and LSD at the bottom with alcohol and tobacco quite high up on that range. Would you place the legally available drugs on this scale as well? There would be merit in extending the classification if something like our system were adopted to, to all drugs with psycho that, are, that are abused, that have psychoactive um, actions. Uh, and indeed, the ranking that was produced for such legal drugs might be a guide as to when it was considered serious enough that those drugs should be made illegal. To classify or evaluate a drug like salvia, we need to know what's in it. At St George's Hospital, I met John Ramsey. He's one of the people behind Tic Tac, a database for the visual identification of drugs. So this is some salvia we bought uh, in Camden High Street just today. Right. Uh, this is the salvia 10 times organic extract. Is this the kind of thing you would have on the database? And uh, I mean, how would you search for it on there? Yes, yeah, so we do have it on the database, and, and we can just type in the name. Right. So we found it there? Yes. You can look up the active ingredient. It tells you what salvia is. It tells you it's a herb. It's an abused drug. It's not controlled under the Misuse of Drugs Act in, in the UK. I mean, we saw some YouTube clips earlier of people apparently taking salvia and they were kind of going a bit crazy. Um, I mean, is that the kind of thing that you would expect? It's difficult to say that I expect anything, really, because our knowledge about this drug is, is confined almost to the information you're quoting. You know, we get our information from users' experiences. And, of course, the problem is they don't really know what they're taking. 
whilst it's very clever to make these new products and get them sent to you, you've no idea what they're doing to people, surely? Absolutely. I mean, the pharmaceutical industry spends 10, 100 million pounds or more on toxicologically testing new compounds in animals long before it ever gets considers even giving them to people experimentally. Whereas these people are, are really experimenting on teenagers, effectively. That's quite sort of frightening, considering it, they're all called herbal highs. Absolutely. I, they call them herbal highs to make them sound safe and cuddly, I suppose. Salvia and drugs like them are marketed as herbal highs, a safer alternative. But we have no idea what's really in them. Judging by what I found out, maybe we should be regulating them. Perhaps it's the classification system itself that needs attention, because as it stands, it doesn't seem to provide much protection or guidance against any drugs, legal or illegal.